Welcome to the um, 70th anniversary of the Manhattan Project and the commemorative session we have for you today and tomorrow, I think, is very special. We have some of the most fabulous Manhattan Project veterans, as well as historians and experts, uh, who will together give you a kaleidoscope of views on what this project entailed. It was complex and vast, enormous in its ambition and its undertaking. But it really depended upon the resourcefulness, the determination, and the can-do attitude of each and every one of the participants. They call the, the folks of World War II the greatest generation, and it is a name that is most appropriate. And I think after this afternoon, you will agree. We're only going to hear a little uh, soupçon, a little taste from a dozen or so veterans. Unfortunately, unless you guys uh, want to stay here till 2 a.m., <laughs> we don't want to stand in the way of the reception at 5 o'clock. And so we're, we're going to put a parade of very illustrious and accomplished men and women uh, who spent a brief two or three years uh, building the world's first atomic bomb. I want to say that um, we've come a long way, that is the Atomic Heritage Foundation, in our efforts, uh, most notably with Congress enacting a Manhattan Project National Historical Park. And we are absolutely delighted that Congress came through in the last hours of December session last year. We will have tomorrow um, Senator Martin Heinrich, who will give you the inside story from one congressman who is vitally important to that effort's perspective, but also from the Department of Energy and Interior to give you a little glimpse of a preview of coming attractions. And for you who are there, it's deja vu. What do you mean? Coming attractions. You were there. You created this history. But fortunately, there are some properties, and with your oral histories and memories, we can reconstruct a century from now, at least to some extent, what happened there. This is really a world history. It wasn't just about what did those folks in Los Alamos and Oak Ridge and Hanford and the other sites involved do, but it was in the context of the greatest war that mankind ever um, ensued. It was you know, a horrific war, but in, it involved um, all of the world's nations. And we are really delighted that the Japanese um, people and their media, television stations, both private and public, have taken such an interest in what happened here in the Manhattan Project and in the um, issues of the end of the World War in the Pacific. And so we welcome um, the many uh, media who will be here over the next two days capturing this history, but also the weeks and months that they have been spending interviewing people, going, traveling to Oak Ridge, traveling to Providence, Rhode Island to interview Billy Hornig, uh, and all over to capture the story. So we think what they are doing will be very valuable and enrich the resources that we have in the future. We just came from a small group of us, um, a very a brainstorming session, to see how can we increase um, the education of not just the American people, but perhaps people around the world about this history. And what we're plotting is a Manhattan Project National, or a traveling exhibit. And our idea is that, you know, Oak Ridge, Hanford, and Los Alamos, which is the sites where the National Park will be, are a little distant from the major population centers. And wouldn't it be nice if the people in Boston and Atlanta and New York and 
Dallas-Fort Worth and San Francisco and other places around the country also had a chance firsthand to see some of the artifacts and learn some of the history that might then intrigue them to go and see the actual sites. So we are working on this um, with some very illustrious historians and museum experts with the idea we could launch this um, sometime in the next two years. So we're inviting each of you to make sure we have your stories, or if you have artifacts that maybe you squirreled away in your attic uh, that could contribute to this, or perhaps if you'd just like to make a donation, that would be wonderful. Uh, this is a very ambitious undertaking, but so was the Manhattan Project. And it is most worthy of, I think, a concentrated effort in the next couple of years working with the National Park Service to interpret and present this history. So with that, um, I'd like to take a second to thank those people who were instrumental in funding um, our program over these next two days. You can see in this program book, um, you can read the sponsors, a list. I won't read all the sponsors, but I will acknowledge those that were contributors of $25,000. Uh, that was a joint contribution from the contractors uh, to the Department of Energy at Oak Ridge. Consolidated Nuclear Security, Oak Ridge Associated Universities, uh, UT Battelle, and UCOR. We also received generous donations from Bechtel and the Nuclear Threat Initiative. Individuals who contributed $10,000 included John Now III, Clay and Dorothy Perkins, and James A. Shoki. Uh, we are also very grateful to Lawrence O'Rourke, Larry, Daryl and Catherine Dvorak, Peter Druin, and Watson C. Warner Sr., all who contributed $1,000 or more. And we are deeply grateful to each and every one of you for all of your generosity and support. Thank you very much. Now, because we have these wonderful veterans, I don't want to take any more time but to invite uh, our first group, which are our Los Alamos veterans, to come to the stage. <laughs> 